a city. And to kick us off, I'd like to introduce Tom Williamson, who blogs at Skeptic Canary, and he's going to talk to us about flags. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Um, uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, my name's Tom Williamson, and uh, I usually uh, blog about science and scepticism and that sort of thing, but I've had a uh, passion for flags uh, since I was a kid. And flags aren't you know, splashes of colour that just represent countries. They're, I believe they're of incredible importance. So, for example, when Neil Armstrong went to the moon, he took a flag with him. It's hugely important. Um, here on the right, we have uh, the Soviets flying the red flag over the uh, Reichstag at the end of the Second World War. Uh, again, hugely symbolic. More recently, we've got um, uh, Libya, which I'm sure you're all keeping up with. Uh, some of them burning the Danish flag in protest at the cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad, so they're used as a symbol of defiance. Uh, US uh, raising the uh, stars and stripes at the Battle of Iwo Jima, the Second World War in the Pacific. And here we've got the Russians planting a flag at the North Pole in order to, in order to claim it for themselves. But what of our flag, the UK, here it is in all its glory. Now, has anyone already spotted the deliberate mistake? Thank you, thank you. Yes, it's upside down. Now, watch the corners when it changes. Watch the corners. There you go. Now, the diagonal of the corners tells you which way up it is. If you look at the top left, you'll see the white stripe is, is the thick stripe. So it's, uh, that's the scouts for all broadside top. So that's how you know which way to fly it. And a lot of people don't. So, the history of it, um, the first Union Jack came about in 1606 with the uh, Union of England and Scotland, uh, which uh, obviously gives you this flag without the stripes. The stripes came in later. Now, there were lots of designs proposed, and one that you see in Scotland, if you look hard enough for it, is a version where the uh, St. Andrew's Saltier is above the Cross of St. George. Um, 1801, Act of Union between Britain and Ireland introduced the Cross of St. Patrick and that's, that's how we get today's modern flag with the diagonal stripes which has stayed with us to this day. Now, flag, now the flag of England is the Cross of St. George. Uh, St. George is this chap here, an uh, uh, early Christian saint and martyr who in legend killed, killed a dragon. Now, St. George... Uh, although we think of him as being English, he in fact got around a bit, and a lot of people look to St. George as an inspiration. So his cross ends up on lots and lots of flags. So on top left, you've got Georgia, top right, Barcelona, you might have seen there, Club Crest, uh, Genoa and Sardinia. Uh, St. Andrew, uh, patron saint of Scotland, he was uh, an apostle of Jesus, killed on this diagonal cross. Hence you get the Scottish uh, uh, salt here. Now, the origin of this, uh, a Scottish king, King Onegus, uh, prayed that he would venerate St. Andrew if he was successful in battle, and a vision of the flag appeared on the battlefield. So that's how the flag of St. Andrew came about. However, just like St. George, he was also venerated in many other countries, one of which is Russia, and this is Russia's naval jack. So, so the flag of St. Andrew, as well as being found in Scotland, is also found in Russia. Now, the Cross of St. Patrick, you rarely see nowadays. Um, I won't go into Irish politics, because if I do, I'll be here all night. But a lot of people in Ireland aren't that keen on the Cross of St. Patrick, because essentially it's a rotated St. George's Cross, so a lot of people see it as an English symbol. Now, there's also uh, a few flags which aren't of the Union Jack, one of which is the flag of Wales. Now, how awesome is this flag? It's got a big, scary dragon on it. It's also, uh, uh, the colours of the background are uh, white and green, which are the colours of the Tudors. And the flag, uh, uh, the, the dragon in the flag, uh, comes from the uh, legend of King Vortigen. The uh, Celts had a red dragon, the Saxons had a white dragon, which fought each other. So the uh, red dragon has been a symbol for a long time. But Wales has also got a cross of St. David. You remember uh, St. David being patron saint of Wales, and here is his flag on the, uh, on the old badge of the Celtic Crusaders in Cardiff City. You don't see that as much as the uh, uh, red dragon. And also Cornwall has its own flag. You might have seen this at Glastonbury. This pops up quite a lot. St. Piran's flag. Uh, Cornwall famous for tin. The black is for the 
ore and the white is for the metal. So, uh, and there it is on a few other places. Now, the influence of Union Jack has been huge, and to this day it remains the flag of lots of places. So you've got Australia, Bermuda, uh, British Columbia in Canada, and even Hawaii, a state of the USA, has a Union Jack on it. And that's me. Thank you very much, everybody.